As we know, with the increasing demand and the project requirements for different companies, we require new software along with different operating systems for applications, which creates more data and we need more processing power and more memory. But there's a way to overcome such situations known as virtualization. Hi guys, and welcome to another exciting video by Simply Learn. But before we begin, if you like watching tech videos, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update. So to understand what exactly virtualization is, let's take a look at an example. So meet Jake. He works as a software developer in an IT firm, and he often has to work on different projects involving multiple operating systems. According to the requirements of the project, during which he often come across cases where the managing of data becomes problematic, due to the compatibility issues with the different operating systems, which makes it hard for the completion of the project. So what can Jake do to overcome such a problem? Well, to overcome such a problem, he decided to use the way of virtualization. But what is virtualization and how does it help us? Well, let's take a look. To begin with, we'll take a look at what exactly virtualization is and how it can help us. Then we'll understand what virtual machines are. After that, we learn about the role and different types of hypervisor that are involved during the process of virtualization. After that, we learn what different types of virtualizations are available and how differently they affect our systems. And lastly, we will see what benefits virtualization provides us with. To begin with, we'll understand what virtualization is. Virtualization is nothing but utilizing a software to create a virtual layer over the hardware, which allows the system hardware to be used more efficiently and allows appropriate return for a hardware cost. The software hypervisor also allows the elements of the system, like storage, memory, processor, and etc., to be distributed among multiple separate and secure virtual computers known as virtual machines. To understand the situation of virtualization much better, let's take a look at an example. This is a system installed with the Windows operating system, which is officially known as the host OS, where the virtualization software known as the hypervisor will run. And then using the hypervisor software, we can have multiple instances of different OS, including Unix, Mac, and Linux, which are known as virtual systems or guest OS. The working of the virtualization is only possible by using a software known as a hypervisor, and later in the video, we will also learn about the working and different types of hypervisor involved. Now that we have understood what virtualization is, let's take a look at what a virtual machine is. So as the name suggests, virtualization is nothing but an emulation or a virtual representation of a physical operating system on a hardware device. The virtual machines are also known as guest OS, whereas a physical system that they run on is also known as the host OS. Now, let's take a look at the software that makes the virtualization possible. Hypervisor is a software layer that manages the virtual machines. It forms an interface between the physical system and the virtual machine, which ensures the proper access of the resources. It also manages the virtual machine so that they don't interfere with each other's resources. Let's take a look at what different types of hypervisors are there. The first type of hypervisor is known as the type 1 hypervisor, or the bare metal hypervisor. This type of hypervisor directly interacts with the hardware system and user resources. The other type of hypervisor is known as the type 2 hypervisor, which runs as an application on the host operating system, and the hypervisor also coordinates with the virtual machine for resource management. Let's take a look at the Type 1 hypervisor. They run directly on top of the host operating system and utilize the hardware resources. And that is why they're also known as the bare metal hypervisor. They take up the place of the host operating system and works as the own operating system. And since this type of hypervisor works directly on the hardware system, they are highly efficient. Now that we understand Type 1 hypervisor, let's take a look at the Type 2 hypervisor. This type of hypervisor doesn't directly work on the operating system hardware, 
but instead it works as an application in the host operating system where they are suitable for running individual systems. Users can also have different multiple OS installed in the physical system by using this type of hypervisor. Due to the application-based working of the Type 2 hypervisor, they are also known as virtual machine monitors, or in short, VMMs. Now that we understand what different types of hypervisors there are, let's take a look at what types of virtualizations are present. The first type of virtualization is the desktop virtualization, then the network virtualization, storage virtualization, and lastly, the application virtualization. Let's take a look at them one by one. For desktop virtualization, as the name suggests, in this type of virtualization, we can run multiple operating systems on a single hardware system. Let's take a look at the different types of desktop virtualization. The first one is Virtual Desktop Infrastructure, or in short, VDI, which runs numerous virtual machines on a central server and then hosted to the user according to the user's requirement. In this way, the user can access any operating system without having to physically install the particular operating system in its hardware system. The second one is known as local desktop virtualization. As the name suggests, it uses a hypervisor software on a local system, which allows a user to run multiple operating systems simultaneously without having to affect the host operating system. The next type of virtualization is network virtualization. In this type of virtualization, the software creates a virtual instance of the network that can be used to manage from a single console. And it also forms the abstraction of the hardware components and functions, including switches, routers, and etc., which simplifies the network management. Different types of network virtualization are software-defined virtualization, which virtualizes the hardware that controls the network traffic routing, and the other one is network function virtualization. Virtualize is the hardware appliances that provide network-specific functions easier to configure and manage, for example, a firewall. Let's take a look at the third type of virtualization known as the storage virtualization. This virtualization enables all the storage devices on the system to be accessed and be managed as a single storage unit. The storage virtualization collects all the storage into a single pool from which they can allot another virtual machine on the same network as required. And this makes it easier to assign storage for multiple virtual machines with maximum efficiency. And the last virtualization that we'll discuss is the application virtualization. In this type of virtualization process, the application runs directly without the need of installing it into the system, as they run on a virtual environment. Different types of application virtualization app, the local application virtualization, and this type of application runs on the host device, but runs in a different virtual environment, but not in the hardware. The second one is application virtualization. And in this, the application is on the server side and it sends some of the components to the host device according to the requirement. And last is the server-based application virtualization. This application runs directly on the server side and sends only the interface to the client system. Now, let's take a look at the benefits of virtualization. The first one is resource efficiency. As the name suggests, before virtualization, each application server used its own hardware resources, which were being underused. But with having multiple virtual machines, maximum utilization of the hardware capacity occurs. Then we have minimum downtime, which refers to the crashes of operating systems and applications, which can cause a halt in the user productivity. By using virtualization, the admin can run multiple similar virtual machines simultaneously and change over the working instances in case of a crash instead of having multiple dedicated servers. And then we have time management. Buying, installing, and configuring a new system is not only costly, but also a waste of time. In such a case, virtualization can solve the problem, provided that the existing hardware resources are sufficient for running the virtualization software. Otherwise, it can be configured for the same. Now that we have reached the end of the module in which we learn what is virtualization, what is the virtual machine, and how to hypervisor work during the process of virtualization, We can use this process to make our work easier. If you have any doubts, you can ask them in the comments section. And thank you for watching.
Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.